Hi, welcome to another episode of Homebrew the Partial Mash Way. Today we're going to be transferring our cow chocula extract kit from secondary into keg and we're also going to be filtering it. Now the reason I filter is solely just to get the yeast out. Um, not worried about other like small chain proteins and stuff like that. Not worried about getting it totally clear or uh, chill, you know like for chill haze. I'm not concerned about that. I just I don't like yeast suspended in my beer because the yeast in my stomach don't agree with one another, and that's really the only reason why. I know some people say it strips flavor, but I'm okay with that because I think the amount of flavor that it strips is so slight that. I don't, I just would rather not have my stomach be upset from drinking beer with yeast in it. Um, in the past, I know I've uh, like, um, let's see, I had a tasting video where I talked, where I showed and I talked about how clear I'd gotten it because I, not only did I filter, but I also um, uh, did some gelatin findings too um, after, a, uh, after a cold crash. I, I'm not gonna do that anymore. It's just, it makes more work don't need it. All I want to do is get the yeast out again for my stomach. Um, so having said that, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Nope. Let's just get uh, right into getting this transferred. Everything of course has already been cleaned and sanitized. I'm not going to bother videotaping that. So I'll just grab the keg. That's kind of off camera, isn't it? Yeah. Dang it. Drop in our auto siphon. Well, need to remove this airlock here first. You know, something that was really cool with this cow chocula that I guess I it makes sense, but I wasn't expecting it was adding those cocoa nibs uh, set the set fermentation back off. I mean, it, I came back the next day and this thing was bubbling furiously. I mean, you can see that. I don't know if this camera is getting that, but there's some crossing right here. Let's see if I can get that in the shot. Let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see that there's just another layer, a layer of gook that formed after uh, after I added the after I dropped it into the carboy and then added the cocoa nibs to it. Yeah, fermentation took back off. So really, what I should be doing is taking a uh, gravity reading, but I've already got that in. I'll just take it out of the cake. No big deal. So here we go. Let's get this tube down into our keg. Anything that's left in here is just sanitizer and I'm not really worried about getting sanitizer in the final product. Okay, so again, what I like to do is I'll go all the way to the bottom. Yep, now I'll pull it back out so it's not resting on the bottom. Give her a pump. One should be enough. I probably have way more tubing than I need. And then she's off. So after we do this, then we'll hook up the filtration system. And uh, it's, kind of, it's pretty neat. Uh, they sell it on Midwest Supplies. It's basically a canister filter. It's like, like a, you know, it's like a water filtration system where you, uh, you take from the, uh, you pull from the out side of this keg that we're putting into first and then we'll actually fill to the outside of another keg and with the water filtration system in between them. Um, another thing too is they recommend, Midwest recommends for the system that you use a five micron filter first and then go back through with a one micron filter. I think they suggest that because the five micron is for you know the big particulates and then that way you don't have to run the risk of clogging a one micron filter. Well I, I like to think I do a pretty good job of keeping large particles out of, uh, out of what will be the finished product. So I skip the five micron and then just do one pass with the one micron just to get as much of the yeast out of the beer as possible. And I haven't had any clogging issues yet. And, I'm, and, I, know, and I know for a fact that this works as far as getting the yeast out because again, I can, I can session this beer, have you know four, five, six of them, and then the next day not spend you know a lot of time in the, on the toilet, if you will. Okay, well, I'm just gonna let that go. Um, I'm gonna try some time lapse here. So I'm gonna step out of the shot and just let it film.
Okay, uh, so we got done transferring from the secondary carboy into our keg. You'll notice that I left uh, a pretty decent amount in the carboy. That's because I brewed probably closer to five and a half gallons than five. Um, that way I could fill my keg and leave that last little bit that's probably got the most yeast and sediment. Just leave it sit in the carboy and throw it out. So anyway, let's go ahead and take our uh, gravity reading with our thief and our our hydrometer both already been cleaned and sterilized before the video Let's see what we got okay and it looks like we're gonna end at 1.08 1.08 huh so just a little off from what they uh, from what they recommend. I think they said the final gravity would be 1.016. Not too worried about it. All right, so I'm, I am going I am going to taste this because I'm very curious. I'm going to use the, what I typically use for tasting. Don't know why this has become my go-to glass, but it has. So here we go. Got myself a big old sample. Really curious if the chocolate comes through. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of got almost more of a dark chocolate taste. I like it. It's a good kit. You get that uh, kind of a thick mouth feel. I think that's from the lactose. Mmm. Ice cold and with some bubbles. Can't wait. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up, off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the filtration system and then I'll come back right before I start filtering and let you guys uh, take a look and see how it's set up. It's really easy. Okay, till then. Okay, so we got everything set up. It really didn't take me but a second. So on the right side, we have the keg that currently has the beer in it, uh, lid closed. I'm about to introduce CO2. Then on the outside of the keg, you see it'll come through that vinyl tube down here to uh, to the filter, just a simple canister filter. I have a one micron um, paper filter in, in there, paper style filter. Then the out is gonna go up, and we're, this is the important thing, we're gonna go through the outpost. That's why you'll notice the ball lock is black, like for out and gray is for in. The reason being is obviously we don't want the beer dropping for all the way from here and being agitated. Um, plus you just, you don't want to have liquids in your gas in your gas lines anyway. Um, it's important to remember on this one during filling that I'm not capped. It's just resting inside there, because otherwise, it's the, otherwise what's going to end up happening is as you do this, the system's going to uh, balance eventually, and the fluid's going to stop. Another thing too is you'll see that you know I've got my CO2 tank hooked up. You are you're going to adjust your pressure with your regulator to where you're just moving beer it does you want to go as slow as possible the slower you go the better it's going to filter um, plus you're not going to damage the filter and that way you're not also agitating your beer any more than you need to so we're going to go ahead and start her up i'm going to try and stay out of the shot so you can see this okay my tank is closed right now make sure my regulator is all the way to zero okay so Gas supplies on, and I'm just gonna slowly bring up my regulator until I start seeing beer move. Shouldn't take very long. Oh, it helps if you open the valves. There we go, there's beer moving. And right now my gauge is telling me I'm like right at two PSI. See, it doesn't need to be real fast. That actually might be too much. 
seems like it filled that canister awfully fast. That's interesting. I'm not getting any, I should be getting beer on the outside. Give it a little more pressure. There we go. Now I've got beer on the outside. That's another thing too, the slower you allow that canister to fill, the less you're gonna get of those bubbles you see. And again, you don't want those bubbles. Another reason to take it slow. Okay, well, I'm gonna sound off. I'm gonna keep the camera on and I think we'll do another quick uh, speed up through the rest of this process. Okay, and that's that. Uh, right there at the end, whoops, you saw me uh, remove the inside, the out, <laughs> okay, the out coupler to the outside that was actually going in the keg, if that makes any sense. You saw me remove that coupler and you know, just I just reached in. What I what you do is what I how I do it as soon as I start seeing the last little bit, which is going to be foam, hit hit that, I pull it off, and then I'll depressurize the other side and clean that all up and be done with it. Um, just that way, none of that agitated foamy beer ends up. And yeah, you're going to lose some beer, but again, that's why I tend to brew more closer to five and a quarter to five and a half gallons of beer when I brew. Um, that way. Um, you know, through leaving some in the carboy like I did and having some stuck in this filtration process, I still end up with probably at least five, maybe more five gallons of finished product. Um, uh, so now I'm going to take this downstairs to my keg grater. I'm going to stick it in my keg grater. I'm going to set, uh, I got to look at the I gotta look at the force carb chart again. It's been a while since I looked at it for a stout, for a stout but I wanna say it's somewhere between seven and 10 PSI. And I, I don't do any you know, agitating or anything like that. I'm, I'm a patient person. I would much rather it be carved right than run the risk of over-carbing over -carbing it and have to deal with that. Um, so I use the set it and forget it method. I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm gonna hook it up to gas. I'm going to set my regulator to whatever the force carb uh, chart says um, for the temperature and the temperature and the final result of carbonation that I want for a stout and uh, probably try it in a week. So hopefully this weekend, by this weekend, because today's Monday, I'll be able to uh, try that beer. I'll probably try it before then because that's, that's just who I am. But um, Actually, so speaking of this weekend, uh, I have a very, uh, very special uh, brew video coming up this weekend. I wasn't actually planning on brewing for a while um, because with the amount of beer that I'm drinking now, which is not much, uh, I'm really cutting down on my uh, beer consumption for health reasons, uh, that mm, five gallons of beer should last me a good long while. So I don't really want to have a whole bunch of beer sitting you know, in my fermentation area just waiting so uh, but anyway this beer is very special it's for it's for an occasion um, I'm gonna be brewing it and then I'm probably I'm hope the, the idea is the hope is is that whatever I'm taking it to uh, my my buddy's uh, bachelor party um, and hopefully it's a hit and it gets finished in one night and he is actually going to guest star um, on the, this next episode if I can talk him into it anyway so we're gonna be brewing up a uh, Basically what I'm going to brew is I'm going to be brewing an 
a jalapeno IPA. Uh, never done, never added jalapenos to a beer. I've done some research and the funny thing is, is I'm actually gonna try all three ways that I've heard of, but with fewer jalapenos at each stage. Um, see if how it turns out, because I love experimenting. That's, I mean, that's part of the reason why I, I do this. In another life, I think I was a chemist. Uh, because I love cooking and I love making beer because I love experimenting with flavors and different uh, pro uh, products. And so yeah, so uh, my buddy's gonna be uh, here. We're gonna be brewing it. We're, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be full partial mash. You know, we're gonna do eight pounds of grain, tons of hops in this beer. This, because he's a big IPA fan. Um, I'm actually, it's gonna be a take on that recipe I did in my very first video. Um, the grain bill is pretty, is very similar. Um, I think one or two of the hops is gonna be utilized that I used from that first IPA. Uh, but yeah, so it should be a pretty good beer. I'm hoping to get that, I'm hoping, I know, I know I'll hit the hop notes. I'm not worried about that, but I'm hoping I get the, the right balance of peppery and hop with that jalapeno. Should be good, should be real good. So anyway, so yeah, that's it. I don't really have anything else. Pretty simple, simple, fun little video to do about uh, how I filter and keg. If you guys want me to go over how I carb and be more detailed, hey, hit the, you know, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I don't plan on ever doing a carbing video, but I can. Uh, not, not a big deal. Um, yeah, so I'm done. Hey, if you liked it, hit that, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down, and then leave a comment and tell me what you didn't like so I can fix it in the future. And uh, please. Subscribe and make sure you uh, turn on alerts so every time I post a new video, you'll know when it hits. All right, guys, until next beer, cheers.